right, welcome. Thank you so much for coming to our workshop, Natural Solutions for Stress Management. Um, so I'm just gonna start off by giving a little talk about what stress is, how we currently deal with it in this country, and um, some natural, obviously, solutions, and also the toll that stress can take on your body um, that sometimes we maybe not, not be aware of. So I'm gonna have us start off by imagining someone that you know who is radiantly healthy. And just imagine what their life um, might look like. So you probably don't imagine that they wake up and like hit snooze 10 times and then you know get up and take some pills to get through their day and then wash it down with some scotch at night and then just go fast asleep and take more pills and sort of <laughs> drown in their sorrows, right? <laughs> Is that not what comes to mind? <laughs> Not quite. So our intuition knows what health is, right? Like we know what health looks like, we know how it acts, um, but we don't, um, we've kind of lost touch with how to get there and how to keep hold of that and how to navigate that as a society. So um, in our office, what we do is our best to get you back on that path to health, to limit stressors of all kinds in your life and to, um, one, remove stressors from the body. Two, create an environment in the body where healing can take place. And then three, do that all without drugs or surgery, ideally, as naturally as possible. So, um, basically some symptoms of high stress, which we all are familiar with, is persistent distress. You can have a sense of hopelessness, right? Fatigue, um, things like anxiety or overwhelm, um, that constant voice in our head that keeps going. Then you can end up with poor memory, low libido, and general just irritability. Um, and if it gets more extreme, you can even have a sense of panic or dread. Um, and you can basically, you know, feel trapped inside or completely emotionally flat. So some people describe their stress or their anxiety or depression as, um, I could cry at any minute all day long. Some people say, I don't remember the last time I cared about something enough to cry. I feel just kind of empty inside. And so these are things that people say quite a lot. And so how do you know if you have stress, if you have anxiety, if you have depression, how do you know which one's which? And um, respectfully, my, my tentative answer to that is who cares, right? It doesn't matter what you call it, you heal it the same way. You add more healthy things in your life, you remove negative things, and you build health and therefore get further and further away from disease. And then you can name it if you need to name it. But like, name it something like Betty, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> Betty, my anxiety is here with me today because I was nervous about my talk, no. Um, but, but don't, but who cares, right? Like, let's, let's um, go on a journey of health and natural uh, remedies. So let's consider what happens in a traditional medical office. So these are some beliefs that, um, that you may be taught to believe is, are true if you go to a traditional medical office. Um, so when do we go to a doctor? When we don't feel good. When we don't feel good, yes. And um, what happens? Give you a bunch of pills. We get a pill. Yeah, yeah. And it's a flow chart that way. So like, how do you feel? Uh, have you had a temperature? You know, and then they're thinking in the back of their head, kind of like, well, okay, this, well, yes or no, okay, 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 and it all kind of leads down to a pill. And they truly in their hearts think that is the answer and that's what they're taught. So um, the problem with pills though, as we know, is they have side effects, right? Um, serious side effects. And so if we have basically our body's check engine light going on saying something's wrong, something's wrong, and we take a pill to deal with those symptoms, it's kind of like putting a Band-Aid over the check engine light and going, I feel better now because it's not there. But what happens every time you ignore your check engine light? Your car catches on fire. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> almost every time. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you're, something's gonna happen, you're gonna break down. So um, typically, we're told that medicine is going to control our symptoms and then we end up with these really kind of disturbing statistics and we are given things to manage our stress we're given xanax for test anxiety we're given um you know uh, zoloft for postpartum depression 
Um, but really there are very real causes for what can happen. So one in four women has had a medication dispensed to them for a mental health condition. Uh, women are four times more likely to take pills for mental health than men. Um, and then the amount that these were prescribed went up by almost 400% um, from, if you look from these years, which is almost 10 years to just in three years, the amount went up by 400%, which is outrageous, right? Um, and so we are looking for magic bullets and you, we're very aware, like just raise your hand or give me a head nod if you know that we have a nationwide opioid crisis right now, <laughs> right, yes. Do you also realize that we have a nationwide psych med crisis? We don't talk about it as much, but it is true. And it is dangerous and it is scary. This, it's like the single most or second most next to statins dangerous drug out there for you. And a lot of people are on statins too. <laughs> so we'll get to that. We just want a pill to cover up our, um, our, our pain, our problems. But the side effects are serious. So at what cost, right? Um, so raise your hand if you would love to experience some liver damage, some abnormal bleeding, some sexual dysfunction, right? And, and maybe some suicidal thoughts. No, of course not. But these are what things that happen very seriously. There's even a name for withdrawal. They have given a name to the withdrawal of psych meds. It's now called discontinuation syndrome. And it's, it's a title because we're obsessed with naming things. What's wrong with me? The, the system. <laughs> the system is what happened in that instance. Um, and there wasn't a plan to safely come off of these drugs. If there is, and you go on it for a little while, because I've been on them, I have a personal journey that I've gone through, I, um, and I felt there was a need at the time. Um, if I would have known everything about it and how I could prevent it naturally, I probably wouldn't have gone on them, but I did at the time and that's okay, except for there was no plan to get off um, whatsoever, much less safely and efficiently and a, a, an end in mind, basically. So um, basically, year after year, we go through life kind of taking these pills to cover up our symptoms and we get um, fatter and we get sicker and more inflamed and we get more sad and more anxious and that's stressful. <laughs> that right there is stressful, right? Mm -hmm. So um, prevention is possible. Lifestyle medicine is a very real thing and a lot of people are so nervous that they so don't trust themselves or sometimes don't even feel that they're worth it truly when you really get down to it that they are afraid. They're afraid of their own habits. They're afraid of their own willpower rather than empowered by it. So medication treatment comes at a steep cost and, and you cannot even achieve optimal health if you're taking medication because you are filling yourself with chemical toxins. So you should know that your health is under your control. And if you work with lifestyle medicine, you see simple things every day make huge impacts in people's lives. And it's very real and it's very um, helpful. And so it's the concept of health is up here, disease is down here. Every choice you make. So get eight hours of sleep a night, health. Get two hours of sleep and try to function, disease, right? And eat broccoli, health. Eat Snickers, disease. <laughs> it's very simple. And even if you eat that Snickers, that's okay. Treat yourself occasionally, but then get back on the track to health the next day or the next minute even. Don't even wash the whole day away. How many times have you said like, well, I have a party this weekend, so this week's a wash. I'll start over next week. <laughs> As if every breath you take between now and then just doesn't count, right? <laughs> so um, why are we stressed? So there are very real reasons. Structural and postural imbalances in pain. Pain is stressful and um, twisting in your spine, pressure on nerves causes excess cortisol levels, it causes higher blood pressure, it causes anxiety and anxious feelings, and uh, pain itself, it can be debilitating and depressing. Inflammation, so those bad choices that we potentially are making each day cause chronic low-level inflammation. So not like I sprain my ankle and it's inflamed, but like inflammation you can barely detect because it's present throughout the body and masks itself as symptoms such as pain, stress, um, headaches, restlessness, fatigue, these things that almost all of us checked when we fell out our, our paperwork. Um, adrenal fatigue, so your adrenal glands make the cortisol there, what your body does in order to control your stress levels. If they are tired and fatigued and worn out, then you are going to be stressed. Thyroid conditions and therefore hormone imbalance. 
definitely plays a big role. Cortisol is a stress hormone. So that plays a big part. And then dysregulation of the immune system. So when your immune system is worn out, you can't keep up, you can't heal, you don't feel good, and you're stressed. So there are physical, chemical, and emotional stressors. Um, so chemical stressors are things like the nutrition you eat, um, how much alcohol you consume, whether you smoke cigarettes or not, um, hormone problems, every decision you make, there are physical stressors. So that's gonna be your posture, whether you have injury, whether you have pain. Um, even pregnancy could be considered a physical stressor because it's very hard on the body and it's a lot to undergo. Bumps, falls, concussions, bruises. <laughs> Um, and then emotional stressors, so um, family, while we love them dearly, is often the people that cl are closest to us that can drive us the most mad, right? <laughs> um, sorry, sis. Um, <laughs> family, work, uh, school, relationships, finances, right? So these things are very stressful and very real. And you can eat all the kale, you can eat, get all the sleep, you can drink all the water, you can take all the supplements ever given to you, but if you don't get your heart and your mind and your soul right, you are still sick inside, 100%. So let's start with chemical stressors. So this is what I call SAD, it's the standard American diet. And this is what I grew up with as what we should eat. So did everybody, anybody else grow up with the food pyramid, right? Yeah. So all the grains, eat all the grains, like 12 servings a day, right? And we know that that's pretty much bogus by now. Um, some fruits and veggies, make sure you get those in. Yeah, okay, maybe some meat and poultry and then some fats, but really limit your fats. So to a point, this is, this is okay. Limiting unhealthy fats and limiting sugar is great. Um, but so, so what confuses me is how sugar is up here used in small amounts. And, and what are these technically all made of? Sugar, yes. <laughs> Sugar, simple sugars that break down and burn quickly in the body. So 69% of our population now is either overweight or obese. And a third of us is either diabetic or pre-diabetic because we are inflamed and we are stressed. Um, so food you can avoid. Uh, all the fun stuff, no. So sugars, okay, so sweet, simple sugars, white bread, things are processed. Um, so we're going to do a little test right now. Um, sugar will cause bad bacteria to flourish in your gut and kill off good bacteria. So turn to a partner and stick out your tongue. Mm. I know, nice to meet you. Here's my tongue. Um, and, and look and tell your partner if they have a crack or a fissure on their tongue at all. Any cracks or fissures? Yeah. And then if they have a white coating on their tongue. So if you have a crack or a fissure, you might have a zinc deficiency, you might have a B vitamin deficiency. If you have a white coating on your tongue, you might have candida overgrowth from excess sugar intake. So these things we can heal naturally. There's simple ways to kind of find out. That gives us a hint on where to look further when we're doing an exam. Um, so alcohol is good in small amounts. Caffeine can be dehydrating. And it also, if you're stressed, can make you more stressed. Like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I had my coffee today and I feel fine. <laughs> Whoa, that's, that's a little excessive, right? And so you don't want to live up here just because we're trying to keep up. Mm -hmm. Another thing we do in this country is we um, trade our health to build wealth. And we spend our lives just pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and down in our coffee. And we just want to get to this magical place we call retirement and build our wealth. But by the time we get there, we are so tired <laughs> and we are so sick. And, and if we're not tired and sick, then our spouse or our partner is tired and sick. And that's a bummer, right? If you have to take care of the person you spent your life with, then that can be tough too. So we're doing it wrong. You know, retirement, happiness, wealth, and wealth and financial means, but wealth and, and um health and in your heart and soul, it starts now and it matters now. There's not a magical destination, life just keeps happening. So live it and start it now. Um, and then trans fats, things like french fries, <laughs> um, things that are um, artificial like vegetable oils and corn oils, and then excess calories. Um, so overeating. So if you even go to a restaurant, that's enough for like two people at least, right? Most serving sizes. So if you get your to-go box immediately and set half aside, you're probably eating a more appropriate amount of food. Um, so what you can eat is a diet low in sugar and high in healthy fats. So if you're going to cut out all this sugar, you're probably going, well, I don't know what I'm going to eat when I don't eat my bread each day and my pasta and my rice. Where, what do I do? 
So lots of veggies is good and lots of healthy fats. So healthy fats help balance the blood sugar out. They help lower stress. They can suppress the appetite. Eating healthy fats stimulates the metabolism in your body. Many of us are very deficient in fat soluble vitamins. Um, so fat soluble vitamins are important for uh, the coating in your brain, building cholesterol in your brain. Cognitive function has been shown to be better in people who have healthy levels of fats and omegas in their diet, essential fatty acids. And that's because cholesterol coats all of your cells and it is important for all your nerve function in your brain. Um, and then most diagnosed conditions, if I meet someone and they say, I have this label that someone gave to me and now it runs my life and I'm a victim of it. And that's not exactly how they say it, but that's, what I, that's how I hear it. And it breaks my heart every time and I'll say, okay, cut out sugar for two weeks and then come back and tell me how you feel. And if they can do it, they feel amazing. They, they're like, there's something to this, if they can do it, right? Because it's very addictive. But diabetes, autoimmune, so that's thyroid, Hashimoto's, um, hormone imbalances, all controlled largely by diet and important to get those healthy fats. So what are healthy fats? Butter? Yeah, butter even counts. So butter, especially from a local grass-fed source, um, and so the important thing here, um, and I kind of have it highlighted in green, is there's, so there's cholesterol, there's saturated fats, arachidonic acids, fat-soluble vitamins, DHA, and choline. These are all different types of healthy fats that you can find in things like um, fish, like butter, like avocados, um, which you have to sometimes limit depending on your diet, um, olive oil, different things. And they're all good for what? The brain, the brain, the brain, the brain, the brain, the brain. So these are brain foods. These are these are going to control the master control of your body. So very important. Okay. Um, and so then let's talk about your hormones. So um, in your body, your hypothalamus lives in your brain, and it talks directly to your pituitary gland. From there, your pituitary gland conducts the orchestra. Your hypothalamus hired him. <laughs> okay and conducts everything it tells your thyroid what to do it tells your adrenals what to do it tells your sex hormones what to do that's like your ovaries or your testes everything from there happens even your growth hormone even the um, positive feedback loop that happens when a woman gives birth to a child is run by the pituitary and so it's a very important uh, area and when we eat diets that are low fat because it's healthier with all these preservatives in it we are allowing our brains to suffer and therefore our entire bodies to suffer. So let's um, do a couple more quick self-tests. So um, one way that you know if you have adrenal gland sensitivity is if you have uh, frequently are sensitive to light, if you have a lot of sweet cravings, and then if you um, tend to get a little dizzy when you sit up, like postural hypotension where your blood pressure drops, you probably have adrenal gland uh, fatigue rather. Um, if you wake up at the same time in the middle of the night every time and can't get back to bed, probably have adrenal fatigue because you're having a cortisol spike right in the middle of your night of sleep. Um, if for your thyroid, you can take your temperature in the morning and monitor if it's within a certain range. And if it's outside of that range, you might have hypo or hyperthyroid function. Um, you can take, you can buy some pH strips and test the pH of your urine and your saliva regularly to be able to tell if you are acidic and inflamed inside. If your body is acidic, uh, everyone in your body should be 7.0 neutral, um, up to 7.4, except for your stomach, but it's usually reversed. People don't have any acid in their stomach and around their body, they are very acidic and inflamed. If you have um, some calves that cramp regularly and pain in your calves, you might have a calcium deficiency. Um, if you are constipated, you probably have really tight IT bands. Um, so IT bands being tight can really contribute to constipation. Um, and then we're going to feel around on our stomachs a little bit. So um, does anyone have allergies? Me. <laughs> um, so if you feel uh, the point between your xygoid process, which is right at the bottom of your rib cage here, halfway between that and your nipple, you will feel a spot right here, and that's your histamine point. And if that's tender, then you might have a problem with histamines, and you might also have some leaky gut, um, some bad allergy problems. Um, if you have 
tender spots down here low in your belly. You might have some digestive issues going on. So small intestine meets large intestine is on your right and your opening to your colon from your large intestine is on the left. So these can be indicative of problems too. And then pain around the bottom of the whole rib cage. So it's usually a little easier when someone like me goes poking around <laughs> because I know exactly where to go. <laughs> but um, those are some different ways that you can tell if you might have some of these problems. So your adrenal glands are gonna secrete the cortisol in your body. When you have more stress, you have more cortisol. When you eat uh, more sugar, then you have more cortisol. If your adrenal glands get fatigued, it can also start to um, just wreak havoc on the body in general. So many times people will be getting chiropractic adjustments and then before you know it, um, th they just are coming back like, well, this just doesn't work. It's chiropractic's fault. It doesn't work and I can't stay better. And it turns out if we treat their adrenal glands and give them the support they need to manage their stress that's free floating in their system, they are actually then able to heal. It stops your body's ability to heal. Okay, so um, there are different stages to adrenal fatigue. One is when you're driving along on the highway and you see lights go off and blue and red lights going on behind you. <gasps> do you look down at me like how fast was I going and who am I with and what's going on and does my head light out? What did I do, right? And you get that nervousness. That's your fight or flight response. And normally you come right back down from it and they pass you and you go, ha ha, that was them, I'm good. <laughs> you know, and so there's that up and down roller coaster type feeling, and normal people can recover from that really nicely. But instead, um, what we tend to see a lot is uh, when your symptoms begin of adrenal fatigue, you've been in this for a while, you're starting to feel pretty fatigued, and their body is starting to have um, havoc wreaked all over the place, and so you are not then able to start healing. If you get to stage three, this is like, I can't even get out of bed, I'm so tired, um, I don't know, like your immune system is completely depleted, and um, it doesn't have to be all the time, but even if you have some days where it's like just exhausting, that's a big sign of um, late adrenal fatigue. Um, there's These are the tests you can do for that. So there's a test where you look into the eyes and shine a light in and it can tell you your pupils won't even be able to hold a contraction well, which is what gives you the sensitivity to light. And then the blood pressure test that we talked about too. So adrenal fatigue also packs fat right on your midsection. So if you don't have a waist that goes in a little bit, um, you might have adrenal fatigue. Uh, so we'll quickly go through some of the other types. So thyroid, um, common symptoms of thyroid is um, typically you'll have carbohydrate cravings or sweet sugary cravings, a slow metabolism, thinning and coarse hair, um, low muscle tone with some cellulite, and uh, thyroid typically distributes fat very evenly over the whole body. So for ovaries, um, you might have weight gain around your hips and the front of your pubic area, so a little bit lower in your abdomen, sweet cravings, menstrual timing issues or pain, and then some female facial hair can happen when your um, your uh, hormones are imbalanced as well. Gonadal for men typically is gonna have balding right around the crown of the head, maybe some male breasts that form, and possibly even some erectile dysfunction. So what can you take to help you manage the chemical stressors? Fat soluble vitamins or the healthy fats themselves. B vitamins are very important for this. Hormone support, so these are natural herbs like dong quai, black cohosh, chase tree berry, or uh, glandular support for your hormone organs. Um, turmeric and boswellia helps with the uh, inflammation in general. Um, phosphatidylserine, L-theanine, and cava forte are all natural stress reducers, so in the moment or when you know you tend to have higher stress, the first two will eat up the excess cortisol in your body, and the second one will just help reduce um, how you're feeling. These are, uh, the cava forte is actually a Polynesian herb, so it is, um, has just been found to uh, give a very relaxing feeling. However, I would caution to try that the first time in, um, when you don't have to drive or anything, because it can make you a little bit loopy too. Um, it's a pretty powerful herb. So, um, liver detox support to help your body keep up with it, the toll that the chemical stressors are taking on you, and some magnesium can help you relax as well. 
Um, moving on to physical stressors. So your nervous system is so important that it is housed inside of your spine by bones. And even up here, it is so important because you have your whole rib cage protecting your heart, your lungs, and that rib cage even attaches to the spine and therefore surrounds the spinal cord protecting it. Um, so when we get twisting or improper posture in the spine, then pressure can be put on nerves and uh, based on the tight muscles right there, based on postural deviations and compression of the spine and some disc bulging. Um, it's basically like if your body is trying to send a message from your brain out your nerves to your muscles, only the message sounds like this. Would you guys like it if I gave the rest of the talk like this? No, like that doesn't make any sense. The message is muffled, right? And so the message when it goes to your um, muscles and nerves and different tissues around your body, it, it is pretty easy to see, right? That's called pain. <laughs> we get it. It's either spasm or it's numbness, tingling, and um, weakness. And so that is in itself a problem. But the bigger picture here is that those nerves go to your vital organs and go to your hormones and go to come from and go to your brain. And so if there's a problem there, then you um, potentially can start having some other serious problems. I hardly ever meet someone who has a low back problem that doesn't also have constipation. I hardly ever meet someone who has a very bad neck problem who doesn't also have some thyroid troubles. Because guess what? All those nerves go right there. So. Um, we run posture scans in our office to double check what's going on and it can tell you, this is me this morning, I'm doing okay, <laughs> but my head weighs too much. And so it can tell you how much your head weighs based on how you're holding it. Um, and it can tell you um, where you are, where you might be twisted or shifted and then we can look based on your global posture, we can look a little closer. Do you have a good curve in your neck? Do you have a good curve in your low back? Is your spine going straight up or is it taking some detours along the way? And how might this be affecting you? Um, and so this is just a chart of where some of the uh, nerves go. So this is called the Merrick chart and it basically is which nerve uh, levels of the spine go to which organ. So for instance, um, does anyone have reflux and stomach pains? Um, and get like a tightness here after they eat. Uh, you probably also have the T10 area restricted in your back. I know because I deal with it and it hurts right now. <laughs> so you, um, all of these nerves correlate to different places in your body and are very important to get checked out regularly. Speaking of stress, your whole um, mid-back is where your sympathetic nervous system lives and guess what's going to be constantly firing if you have restriction in your mid-back? Your sympathetic nervous system that's your fight or flight response that's those cortisol levels that's that cop that passes you on the highway um, so it's important to take care of yourself so what can you do um, you can get chiropractic adjustments I highly recommend them <laughs> you can get massage therapy I highly recommend massages you can get um, help with your diet so you can have a health coach who I highly recommend um, teach you how to lower your sugar how to add in healthy fats how to balance everything and have some mindfulness um, you can use essential oils to help you relax, and um, Diane, who's here tonight, does Aroma Freedom Technique, which is a great way to deal with emotional stressors. It's a great way to confront stressors and um, identify negative thought patterns and negative uh, pain patterns that happen in the body associated with emotional trauma, and to work towards healing those things, changing them to positive things, and releasing them. Self-care is very important, so exercising, meditation, yoga, prayer, deep belly breathing, vitamin D3 and sunlight, these are all really important things to get a lot of. Um, vitamin D is like your, your smile fat soluble vitamin basically. Um, if you don't have vitamin D, you're not feeling great. That's why it was the first sunny day after the long winter, even here in Northeast Ohio, we're like, does anyone feel great, <laughs> you know? And then you just feel like it's the start of a musical when you, st I feel like it's the start of a musical when I step out of my door. <laughs> and, um, and it really gives you that get up and go. And then of course what we do here, so we do some chiropractic care, we do nutritional testing, advanced testing, hormone panels, leaky gut panels, anything that might get to the bottom of the stress that you might be experiencing. Um, and then we have health coaching here, we have massage therapy here, we have aroma freedom technique, and we try to just have a little bit of something for everyone because if you treat only physical stressors and you come in and you say, 
well, yes, I'm really stressing. I never go to the bathroom, and but my back hurts, and that's all I want to talk about. Okay, well, that's fair. You can say that. But it's kind of like if you came in with your back hurting and I said, okay, we're going to focus on one stressor only. I want you to go home and meditate until it feels better. You would probably not be back, but you'd be really at peace with it. <laughs> and so it doesn't make sense to only look at one stressor. It makes sense to uh, focus on all of them. And that's why we offer a lot of services to help with all of those things. And of course, at the end of the day, it's just about keeping your bucket full. So the more you put into your body, the more self-care you give, the more you have to give. And so it's not even always about you. It's about the people you love in your life. And it's about spending time with those. It's about getting in touch with why you must feel great each day and then holding on to that for dear life. And that will kick the Snickers bar habit every time. <laughs> Okay, and then careful though, there are side effects of lifestyle changes. Like you might end up having a lot of energy and losing some weight and feeling the best you've ever felt. You might even have clarity of mind. You might even not have your label anymore. So just a fair warning, there's some serious side effects to this too. Um, so I love the last one. You might have an unwavering tolerance for distress. You might feel amazing. So be very careful, please. <laughs> All right, thank you. So we can... Um, and move on.